Hi, I'm Paul Morin with the Energy Conservatory and welcome to our webinar titled Intro to the Flow Blaster. And a few housekeeping items first. Um, if you don't hear anything from your computer speakers, um, you'll notice on the right there there's an audio section that uh, has a phone number and you can dial in and listen to the presentation on your phone. Um, if you have questions for the presenter, type in on the right side in the question box um, any questions you might have. And um, during the webinar, we'll be answering questions. Um, at the end of the webinar, we'll, we'll take some time to review some of the questions. And um, any questions we don't get to, we will um, email you a response. We'll try to make the session slides available on the Energy Conservatory website within a week or so. And we'll also have a link where you can, um, you can watch the presentation again or, or share it with others. As we've come to know over the years, uh, customers demand comfort. And um, comfort, in a large part, depends on the amount of air being delivered from a register and the temperature of that air. Commercial uh, test and balance engineers um, have used capture hoods for years to measure airflow through large registers. Um, a large hood directs airflow over a flow grid, and there's an instrument that converts pressure to flow. Um, lower airflow that we see in residential applications, um, that airflow often exits the register in very small jets that can partially miss the flow sensors of the standard capture hood. Um, so flow conditioning is needed to smooth out the flow, but um, the flow conditioning adds resistance, which changes the flow measurement. Um, and this is especially true with uh, lower airflow measurements. Uh, so the flow blaster works by adding the necessary flow conditioning and then precisely adjusting the duct blaster fan to compensate for uh, the pressure losses. So it's, it's designed primarily for residential supply registers, although it can also be used to measure return flow or exhaust fan flow. Um, advantage to the flow blaster is it's, it's equipment you're already familiar with. Um, if you've used the duct blaster fan and the DG700 gauge, um, there's really a short learning curve on, on, um, on uh, figuring it out. And um, you've come to be not only familiar with the equipment, but, but the level of accuracy, um, to trust the level of accuracy from uh, um, the energy conservatory equipment. Um, the calibration requirements are the same as a duct blaster are the same as a uh, 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 calibration requirements for the flow blaster is the same as for uh, uh, for the duct blaster. And the specs, uh, you must use uh, ring two or three, which gives you a flow range uh, from about 10 CFM up to 300 CFM. Um, it includes a battery powered speed controller that gives you about an hour um, at uh, 200 CFM. And, uh, it, it'll be longer than that at lower air flows. It weighs a, a total of about 12 pounds, including the duct blaster fan, and it has inside, the inside dimensions of the hood is about uh, 16 by 16, outside dimensions about 17 by 17. Um, and what's included in the flow blaster system um, includes a carrying case, um, the battery powered speed controller with, that has a, a pouch that it fits into with a strap on it, um, the flow blaster housing and the hood itself, um, the um, charger for the battery, uh, a coil cord that connects the um, controller to the duct blaster fan, um, there's uh, handles that you'll attach to the to the duct blaster fan, uh, the tubing that's that's needed, and the four poles that uh, that hold the um, that hood in place. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the flow blaster housing. Um, if you look inside, you see the uh, the flow sensors. There's two flow sensors, um, one for measuring supplies, one for measuring returns. 
Uh, if we flip it over, we see the side that has the uh, flow straightener and flow conditioner. Um, in the third image, you'll see that there's a, uh, a gauge board to uh, um, attach the DG700 gauge to with Velcro. Um, and, and in this image, you can see it's pointing down, and, and this side it's flapped out, so it's, it's hinged, so you can, uh, you can adjust that to read the DG700. Um, the, um, uh, there's four poles that, um, that you put in to, uh, to assemble the, um, the 16 by 16 hood. The um, battery powered speed controller has an on off rocker switch. Um, it uh, has a manual control knob where you can control it man manually. If you're using the cruise function on it, then you click it to off. Um, it has a fan receptacle that, uh, that the coil cord attaches to to connect the controller to the, um, to the fan. Uh, charger plugs in at this location on the top, and there's a low battery light. Um, flipping the gauge over on the bottom, there's a, uh, a fuse that goes into that fuse slot here. Um, and then there's a uh, carrying case that it fits into that has a strap. Um, that can be used either as a belt or uh, or a harness over your shoulder. Um, and the recharge time uh, for recharging the battery is about three hours. The uh, charger um, has an indicator light, so when you plug it into the wall and then plug it into the uh, um, the battery speed controller. Um, the red will indicate that it needs charging. Green will will uh, indicate that the charging is complete. And the uh, coil cord connects the duct blaster fan to the battery powered speed controller. And it also has the control cable that goes up to the DG700. Um, tubing that you need uh, for the testing is included. Um, as well as the two handles uh, that you'll attach to the duct blaster fan. Um, the tools needed to install the handles, uh, Phillips screwdriver, needle nose pliers, or an open end wrench, and a drill with a 316 inch bit. Um, as you can see, the, the handle will install at the same location as, uh, as the grate um, is installed. On the opposite side of, of the grate, there's a flat spot. Uh, you'll drill a hole in the center of that um, to install the, the, two, uh, the two handles. The capture hood, you'll, uh, you'll put the four poles uh, down into the pole pockets. Um, you'll slide the, the hood up over the poles, and, uh, and there's pole pockets also in the uh, the frame around the top of the hood and you want to make sure those are seated uh, um, all the way in at both the bottom and the top into those poles. Um, to assemble for um, return flow you'll center uh, the handles over the um, the gauge board and then put the connecting trim on that same connecting trim that's used to attach the flow rings to the duct blaster fan. Um, you use that same connector trim to connect the duct blaster fan to the flow blaster housing. Uh, and then you'll start uh, in when you're measuring return flow the flow rings will go on the top here and uh, you use the other connecting trim to attach either ring 2 or ring 3. Then you'll attach the, uh, the coil cord to the uh, to the uh, battery speed controller and connect the other end to the fan. Then attach the gauge um, to the gauge board. Um, then you'll connect the tubing from uh, on channel A. You'll go from the uh, input on channel A to the return um, uh, uh, tap on the flow blaster housing. So there's a return tap that goes to the return flow sensor that's pointing into the direction of the airflow when you're measuring returns. And then there's a supply tap that points the direction of the air when you're measuring supplies. And then when you're measuring supplies, there's also a fan reference tap 
that will need to go to the uh, reference on channel B. So, um, so you channel A uh, input will go to the return tab. Um, channel B input, the red hose will go to the fan tap, the tap on the on the duct blaster fan, like when you're doing a regular duct blaster test. For supply airflow, um, the first step will be you'll put the um, the flow ring you're going to use directly on top of the fan housing. Um, so that's what this image is showing. Um, and um, the um, um, the ring will, the uh, part that goes up into the fan will have to be pointing up when you do that as, as with when you do a, um, put on a standard flow ring on the duct blaster fan. And then you add the connecting trim and uh, the connecting trim will um, will flex out enough so it'll fit uh, over the duct blaster housing, the ring, and the duct blaster fan. Um, so the uh, setup that's different for the supply airflow is uh, channel A input will now go to the uh, supply tap instead of the return tap, and then we'll have to add um, an additional uh, and then the red hose will go to the duct blaster fan like it always does and then uh, the clear hose will go from the reference on channel B to that fan reference tap, the supply fan reference tap. So when we're uh, measuring supply flow, uh, first step turn on the DG700 set the mode to pressure flow, set the device to deck blaster B, set the configuration to ring two or three, set the controller um, knob to off. So we'll turn the, um, the manual um, speed control setting here to off so it clicks off. And uh, we'll uh, turn the power to on. And then we'll set the cruise uh, control to negative zero, not zero. And when you, um, when you put the flow blaster over supply register, it will um, the gauge will be sensing a, a positive pressure in here because the uh, flow conditioner adds resistance. So there'll be air blowing in here, creating a positive pressure. And when you set it to negative zero, it tells the fan to come on and pull a little bit of additional air through the register to offset the um, uh, through the uh, duct blaster fan to offset that that uh, resistance that's caused by the flow conditioner. And once it goes po past positive to negative, um, the gauge will, will um, um, tell the fan to start slowing down. And uh, um, so, so whether you set it to negative zero or zero tells, it, tells the fan when to speed up and when to slow down. Um, then push the, the fan start button and uh, position the hood over the register to measure the airflow. Um, measuring return flow will be the same for supply flow except you'll set the cruise to zero and not negative zero. So those of you who haven't used um, the cruise function on the gauge, um, when you're, when you're um, setting up the controller again, we'll, we'll set mode to uh, pressure flow, we'll set device to duct blaster B, we'll set configuration to ring one or two, and then to set the cruise, we'll click the begin cruise button, and then channel A will be flashing 50, and then we push cruise target. And when we push it once, it'll go to 25, we push it another time, it'll go to zero, push it another time, it'll go to negative zero. So we, we, figure, we configure the um, uh, the cruise target by pushing the cruise target button. Um, so our options for stopping the fan, um, we can push stop fan after we're done taking the reading and uh, to start up again we'll hit start fan. Uh, another option is you can push the hold button and what the hold button will do is it'll turn the fan off and it will um, uh, store the reading. So. Uh, that'll give you a chance to write down the reading, and then when you're ready to uh, take another reading, you'll hit Start Fan. 
So uh, calibration requirements, um, DG700, um, we recommend that that be calibrated annually. Um, for those of you who aren't aware, there is a duct blaster calibration plate that you can purchase and you stretch the flex out all the way, put the calibration plate at the end, hook a green hose from the um, input on channel A to the tap. There's a tap on the uh, um, on that calibration ring and then follow the, the directions um, that come with that plate to um, to get a reading and that reading needs to be within a certain range when you bring um, uh, bring that duct up to 25 pascals and um, another way you can you can um, do a calibration check is uh, appendix A of the manual uh, talks about doing a field calibration check where you check the flow sensor location and check the integrity of the flow sensor that's in channel um, a of the uh, duct blaster manual and that manual is available online uh, next we'll do a, a video demonstration um, using the flow blaster um, you may notice that the uh, you may need to adjust your volume um, from from the um, webinar presentation to that uh, that video presentation